All right. Uh, good morning, everyone, or afternoon if you're on the East Coast, and welcome to the uh, National Electric Code class. Uh, just a word of caution: this is the very first time for us to teach this class, and you know it's going to be a slog. It's going to be a, a start to finish kind of review of National Electric Code. And, uh, you know, we're going to focus on solar power and building electrical systems, generators, batteries, uh, with the idea that we need to be familiar with how all of our on-site distributed power resources uh, interact at the electric service panel and at the point of interconnection. Uh, if you're like me, uh, you got into the solar industry because you wanted to do solar, you know, or you might be an architect or engineer where normally you would put uh, install per national electric code, you know, onto your building specs and a general contractor would take it from there. But maybe now that we're getting newer technologies, you know, LED lighting systems, lithium ion battery banks, solar power, um, you know, building design in the electrical system requires more expertise. Uh, but at that point, you might train up on just one section of National Electric Code and never get around to reading the others other than just, you know, what specifically pertains to your system. Uh, and, and what that means is there, you know, the, the main parts of electric code that govern the entire part of your solar design or what have you, it's just normal electrical requirements that a general contractor uh, might know, uh, common wiring practices, cable selection, raceway selection, breaker sizing, uh, you know, just standard electrical practice. But the expert on the project, the solar guy, the renewables guy, uh, they might know everything about section 690, the photovoltaic section, but then the rest of their knowledge is, you know, might need a, a little bit of improvement. And so uh, we're going to review electric code. Most of our course content is going to draw from, you know, the, the first four sections of class, which govern, you know, all electric installations. And then tomorrow we'll be uh, spending more time on uh, the the specialty equipment, solar and battery banks, unless this gets too dry, and then we will just go into a, you know, br take a break and do a design exercise or, or something like that. So, you know, it does qualify for NABCEP recertification hours. I myself am a NABCEP solar installer. Uh, so, you know, this will have a solar power I guess, uh, flavor to it, if not the focus. Uh, but again, architects and engineers can benefit by just learning more about the NEC to uh, better talk with their on-site contractors. You know, in other courses, we say, well, there's a big opportunity here for architects and engineers to work with general contractors, but you got to be able to communicate. And even if you go into the NABCEP community and bring a, a NABCEP PV expert on board, you know, there's a lot of uh, quality improvements and cost savings we can have by, you know, optimizing that collaboration between the designer, the solar specialist, and the uh, general contractor. So uh, with that, let's just go ahead and drive in, uh, dive in. And I apologize, I'm losing my voice a little bit. So uh, this is going to be a painful class in more ways than one. But... One difficulty in teaching National Electric Code is that we're not allowed to just replicate the code in, uh, in a handout or presentation. You know, code is really by reference uh, only. And uh, the reason for that is the, uh, you know, National Fire <laughs> Protectant Agency now, the, the, the guys who set the standards for the codes, they make money off selling the code books, and that revenue goes to uh, maintain uh, the quality and administration of the National Electric Code. You know, what's surprising about code is it's not a public resource. It's, it's produced by a private organization, 
and uh, it's it should be referred in documents and specifications by reference only. You're not allowed just to reprint the code uh, verbatim. So it, it is protected by copyright, and uh, you know you have to buy a copy of code uh, to you know read through it. If you're going to be an electrical designer, you can't just find um, you know online access to the entire code book for free. Now I have to say the uh, National Electric Code books that I've bought have all been paperback. Uh, but also of exceptional quality. You know, I just recently bought a copy of National Electric Code 2017, which I think is a, a great improvement from 2014. I, I really like the changes they have made. Uh, and I previously had a NEC 2011 book, and I was able to sell my NEC 2011 because even though I am not a... Uh, I, I don't have many, I can't really take care of nice things and it's a seven-year-old reference manual that I use on a frequent basis both on and off the job site. You know, it still had held together enough to be able to sell online. So, you know, there's, even though you really have to buy an actual copy of the code to really delve into it, um, it's, it's well worth the money to just go ahead and do that. Now, for that matter, uh, National Electric Code is not designed as a specification uh, or instruction manual. So it's not there to enable a do-it-yourselfer to install their own solar array in lieu of hiring an electrician. And you know, the spirit of this course is to enable you, if you're unfamiliar with electrical components and National Electric Code, uh, to be able to talk with your electrician on the job site and make sure that if he's new to solar, he doesn't miss anything, uh, or if you're new to uh, balance of system material design, that everything gets picked up. Uh, but this is, you know, this class as well is not intended to uh, render professional advice um, uh, specifically. So, uh, you know, we have to disclaim liability uh, for use of the code uh, and the content in this program uh, before we move forward. So just consider uh, this information just dis so disclaimed. <laughs> 